Gentlemen, let us get ready to start this race. It is nice to have you guys out this morning, Team Belmont. It's 9 a.m. on Queen's Park Savannah in Port of Spain. Before the heat of the day begins in earnest, pupils from Belmont Boys School are getting ready for a 5K run. They take these things seriously round here. Belmont isn't the roughest part of the city, but away from the watchful eye of dedicated teachers, there are fears today for the young men of Trinidad. There's been a crime explosion in the last 10 years, but I'm here to meet a young man who may have a role in changing that. I just want to say good luck to all of you all. This is where it starts. You know, hopefully you all can be on the zonal team, then the national team, and hopefully make it to the bigger stage, the World Championships and then the Olympics. So good, good luck to all of you guys. Jehu Gordon hopes to be competing at the 400-meter hurdles at the London Olympics. Some here say he was born special. His life so far has seen him overcome hurdles no, no, both no. on and off track. It was track. good, it was good. I know a lot, a lot, and some have died already. You know, shootouts, some are in jail. It's really a sad sight to see. For the school, I feel like a proud mama bear. I really do. Knowing where he has come from, you know, his beginnings. I feel really, really proud. We need people to look up to. These kids need someone to look up to. And we hope that we can get more athletes coming out and being heroes. Just before the start of Lent, Port of Spain comes alive. The definition of carnival is farewell to flesh, although these days the original meaning seems to have slipped most of these revelers by. The imagery draws from Trinidad's checkered past, Creole plantation owners, slavery, protest at colonial rule. It's a chance for a nation to let its hair down, party like there's no tomorrow, and forget about their troubles. Maracas Beach is the epitome of a tropical paradise. Any self-respecting sports reporter for the BBC would expect to find himself pitching up here sooner or later. This series is following 26 athletes from all around the world and taking me to places like Iraq and Afghanistan. So a beach, a warm wind and a cold beer is new territory for world Olympic dreams. Trinidad is in many ways classic Caribbean, but there is more to this country. It's a nation that is passionate about its sport Cricket and football vie with each other for the most favoured status, but it, being the Caribbean, they're pretty good at running too. <laughs> Just 19, Jehu Gordon is one of Trinidad and Tobago's brightest hopes for the next Olympics in London. He's a 400-metre hurdler, although a recent operation on his foot means that he's breaking into training gently at the moment. Just thinking about the Olympics alone, you know, it, amazing pictures come to my head. You know, a lot of, a lot of um, crowd support, a lot of intense pressure, you know, because you're going in there and everyone wants to win the gold, so it's like they would do anything to get a gold medal. You know, I'm not happy with just making the final because I want to get that medal. I want to get that gold medal. So I'm... Just I'm, the gold. Well, I want, to, I want to be the best in the world, so, you know. Getting that gold medal would be a big, a big um, inspiration for me. Let's look at the same book of Joshua. If he achieves that goal, it will be due in no small part to both his physical and spiritual strength. 
He believes that it's his faith in God that's helped him get where he is today. How was church? Church was, it was interesting this morning. We learned about um, being the refuge, refuge in Jesus Christ, like seeking him, you know, in times of need and that no humans could really save us and only God alone could save us. And do you feel it's going to be an important part of life going forward with sport and religion at the same time? Yeah, I think God has a, a big role to play in sporting activities, you know, especially sometimes when, you know, you're injured or things really not going as how we expect it to be. So I think he's the one that can keep you on the righteous path. In order to get a better idea of where he grew up, we decide to go for a Sunday drive. And in these parts, that involves a classy Jeep and a driver with a head for heights. It's spacious enough. That's good. I want I know I just want. The hills just north of the capital are where Jehu grew up. He spends his time on a more level playing field these days, but these hills are important to him. I mean, all the roads are so steep around here. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually a good place to train. You know, you do some speed, some speed endurance workouts going up on the hill, you know. This could be the strength that you really need coming home at the end of the finish. Because every time you come out of the house, you've got to go either up a steep slope or, or down. Yeah, or so. down. It's really, it's really working on your legs, so you really don't need to do much gym anymore after that. <laughs> but that's all you've ever known, so from the age of, whenever you could walk, it's been on a slope. Yeah. Since from, since from small, you know, with my book bag in primary school, you know, you're going up the hill, down the hill, up the stairs, down the stairs, so it's like a constant up and down. So I think that's where, like, it really helps with my 800, especially because I do a lot of hill work. Yeah. Yeah. Jay, whose first experience of an international sports event was at the Beijing Olympics in 2008. And even though he was only there as a spectator... When everything was destroyed, it was a, a major landslide that came. It stopped in a room that was actually in the room that I was in. So it was scary at that point in time. And, you know, I was like, you know, I could have lost my life right there. I, you know, my family was there and they comforted me. And after that, I, I went to there and I trained hard like a beast. <laughs> Now, knowing the next week, a lady higher up the road, she was killed by a landslide. So I was truly grateful. So, you know, I, I decided that I had to make a way out of it and I trained hard, I kept focused. You know, my family was there and they supported me 150%. So I knew at that point in time that I was really supposed to be something good and running to, you know, help my family out of that position. It's not been a bad start. After bursting onto the scene with a fourth place at the World Championships in Berlin when he was just 17, Jehu went on to grab gold at the World Youth Championships in Canada last year. Success in sport is a distraction that Trinidad could do with these days. The country has as yet failed to cash in on its huge natural resources and areas of the capital have become breeding grounds for crime. gang warfare, drug trafficking and a gun culture. It's a life that many young men Jehu's age are drawn into. I know a lot, a lot, and some have died already. In violence, I mean, or...? In, in crime, in crime. You know, shootouts, some are in jail. You know, some have made children who are even younger than me. So really, it's really a sad sight to see. Why, why do you think that, that affects Trinidad or these people the way it does? Um, I think, well, I tell you the truth, people see Trinidad as a really small country. To have so much a crime, it's really, you know, demotivating. And I think that they need the right foundation because the foundation is really not stable enough at home especially and they do have the right support group around them you know sometimes the parents the parents into drugs so what else could the kids be doing apart from drugs if they do have somebody else there to always tell them that all right this is not what is recommended of you or that is not what you should be doing because it's like one parent telling them one thing but the next parent telling them another thing
It's sobering to find out the challenges facing young men Jehu's age growing up around him. There's been a 400% rise in murder rates over the last 10 years. Some 30 murders per 100,000 people here make it one of the highest rates in the world. Port of Spain now rivals Kingston, Jamaica and Johannesburg as one of the most dangerous places to live. So what has kept Jehu on the straight and narrow? A visit to his school should give us some clues. Just like that other Caribbean running sensation, Usain Bolt, Jehu's first sporting love was cricket. He first picked up a bat here at Maraval Roman Catholic School. But did his first PE teacher have him down as a sportsman from the start? Yes. What I was afraid of do, his, how should I say, his stature, he was very slim. When he said, Miss, I will do it, like run the 800 meter. I said, are you sure? I doubted myself and I doubted him at the time. But when he pulled through, I saw that, okay, don't judge a book by its cover. And I, after that, I knew that, well, yes, Jehu was on his way. I eventually moved on to By the time he'd got to Belmont Boys, Jehu had already discovered he had a talent for running fast. Yeah, does it remind you of what you used to be like? Um, it reminds me of my first year in school, you know, coming in, you know, you're, you're not really mature at that age and you want to be kicking wrong bottles around the school, you know, pelting corks and paper amongst one another. It was here that a teacher first saw his potential for running over hurdles. Belmont Boys is a model school and the head teacher has a deep passion for her pupils. So how does seeing an old boy doing so well make her feel? <sighs> Proud. I, I look at his fluidity, I look at how he leaps over those, those hurdles, and I, I am very, very, first of all, I'm envious. <laughs> I wish I had that kind of talent for myself. But also, I think that he is so, he has come such a long way from before, when he was just a kind of, you know, trying to find his way. And now he's really confident, so that I am proud of that growth. I'm proud of how he has developed as a student, as a person of Belmont Boys Secondary. You don't need to go far to find what she's talking about. Belmont is a suburb known for its crime rates. I met up with Trinidad and Tobago football legend Brent Sancho. And when you're with a local hero, you've got to try the local food. Yeah, the best doubles in Belmont, all over town, everywhere. Right, no mango? Right. Nice. Yeah. So you use your rapid. Treat me gently. Yeah. Uh, and some mango sauce. Yeah, all I see then. I think you had to worry about it. Make sure you had to hold it. Pull out your hand so flat, take that finger, and pull this onto your hand. Right. Uh, <laughs> now I've learned something. Nice. I didn't know you were holding it. Now, how do you eat it? <laughs> Probably shame on me. You haven't, you haven't stitched me out? No. Now, she comes. Nice. Oh, that's nice. It's very tasty. Yeah. Sancho's made it to the top in his sport and knows just how lonely that journey can be for athletes in Trinidad.